1870s and 80s, one of the biggest public health issues was water. There was no testing of water. And uh, there was also open cesspools around Halifax. When it rained, they overflowed and they ran down the streets in Halifax and into the public wells. Very little was done about it uh, until Charles Tupper comes into Halifax. He soon becomes the city medical officer. And when he does, he tells Halifax City Council, you have to do something about your sewerage system. The most deadly communicable diseases were consumption, which is later called tuberculosis, and diphtheria. Typhoid fever is the third. Consumption was killing both adults and children, over a thousand a year in Nova Scotia. It's, uh, it's very important to understand that before Louis Pasteur, there was no understanding of uh, germ theory whatsoever. Along comes A.P. Reed, who eventually was the Dean of Medicine at Dalhousie. A.P. Reed convinces the government that there should be a Department of Public Health to look after water, sanitation, and immunization. In the midst of all this contamination and sickness, there was no general hospital and no medical school in the Maritimes. Physicians like Charles Tupper and A.P. Reed traveled abroad to receive their training. This was costly and time-consuming, and greatly limited the number of qualified physicians to care for the sick and to advance public health and the practice of medicine. Sir Charles Tupper advocated and argued for years about the need for a medical school. There were 12 physicians initially who formed the medical school, and they got together at one of the surgeons' homes and talked about establishing a medical school. They already called themselves the faculty at that point, the plan was to design a curriculum for the medical school, apply to Dalhousie, and if they got approval, they would open the medical school. And the remarkable thing is that from the time that they met in the surgeon's office to the time they advertised and brought in the first students was five months. I don't think we've done anything that rapidly in the university since then. The initial facilities were really quite scarce. They were given one room for teaching in a Dalhousie College, which was down on the Grand Parade where City Hall now sits. They were given one room for teaching and the attic for dissection. You can imagine what that would be like. The teaching was then done in what was then the City and Provincial Hospital, later the Victoria General Hospital, and the Dead House and the Poor House. So those were the kind of facilities uh, for the training of medical students. Times have changed dramatically since those early days. Dalhousie Medical School came of age in the early 20th century, responding heroically to care for the wounded in the wake of the Halifax explosion and through two world wars. Over the years, visionary faculty members led the school forward to become a Canadian leader in medical education and research, with a profound impact on maritime communities and the world at large. I think serving and engaging society has always been inherent in medical practice. I think in many ways it's where we started as physicians and the modernization of medicine was all about improving conditions for society. And when I think about health of communities, one of the first things I always think about is reducing disparities between communities. Dalhousie Medical School has a long history of serving those in need. Many of its early women graduates, some of the first female physicians in the world, worked overseas as medical missionaries. Others stayed in the Maritimes to care for people on the margins. Learning to care for people from all walks of life became part of Dalhousie's undergraduate training with the advent of the North End Community Clinic in the 1970s. When I arrived, I was very impressed with what we now call the social determinants of health. I was also very impressed with people in the community. It would be fair to say there was a sense of, of almost ownership of this clinic. People had access to health care. They had an understanding that they were respected. 
and that their challenges were understood. The medical school has deepened its commitment to communities through its service learning program, which pairs medical students with grassroots organizations to address social determinants of health. In addition, concerted efforts to connect with indigenous and African Nova Scotian communities through programs such as PLANS are drawing more young people from these communities into medicine. The PLANS program was so supportive from the very beginning of me even starting medical school, and it helped to have people in my corner who knew the struggles and the unique experiences that I faced as an African Canadian in medical school. And, of course, the medical school's distributed education model is helping to build community-based health care all across the Maritimes. Dalhousie Medicine New Brunswick has allowed students from all over the province of New Brunswick to train in their own communities so that they can see themselves practicing in those communities later on. In addition, we've been able to recruit physicians from around the province to be teachers and researchers, which stimulate them to be up to date on the latest evidence-based health care. This is a tremendous benefit to our communities. The definition of community uh, is so broad that I think we have the opportunity to be as big and bold as we want to be. Well, it was really the establishment of Dalhousie Medical Research Foundation in 1979 that's a catalyst for what came afterwards. The emergence of the hospital foundations, the QE2 Foundation and the IWK Foundation was really essential for promoting clinical research at Dalhousie. But there are several key strengths to the research efforts at Dalhousie Medical School. One is collaboration. We have developed core facilities. We have groups of researchers called WAVE. So WAVE 1 would be more senior advanced teams. WAVE 2 are developing teams. Dalhousie Medicine of Brunswick is the latest entry into the research arena. These scientists are making important contributions. At Dalhousie Medical School, we have pinnacles of excellence. We have people who are world experts in their area. The molecules that we have been synthesized can distinguish Alzheimer's disease from normal brain. If we are able to do an early diagnosis, definitive diagnosis, then we will be in a position to improve and maximize the chances for finding the culprit, the cause for Alzheimer's disease, and ultimately the cure. Dalhousie Medical School is making an international impact with its Wave 1 teams in neuroscience, genomics, and the interwoven fields of inflammation, infection, immunity, and vaccinology. At the same time, it is building on established and emerging strengths through Wave 2 teams in cardiovascular disease and an array of health priorities. What is new is the alignment of partners and the commitment to work together. And by these partners, I'm referring to other faculties at Dalhousie, the Nova Scotia Health Authority, the IWK, and Horizon Health in New Brunswick, along with government. This is really quite a unique situation that we have this degree of collaboration in the maritime provinces to be able to put research into clinical practice and see its impact in the relative short term. It is the opportunity to do internationally renowned research while at the same time doing research to improve the health of the people of the Maritimes. It also offers opportunity to work with partners in industry and to innovate around new advances around healthcare delivery. Putting the research findings into action is the key to forward progress. This includes translating evidence into continuing professional development programs so that practicing clinicians are up to speed with the latest advances. The kind of things we've been doing, we have a broad needs assessment where we consult patients we have focus groups with physicians, we talk to hospitals and regulators to find out unperceived needs. We've been starting to introduce simulation into our learning, and so we're working hard to meet everybody's needs. It's super important for physicians to engage in CPD because science and clinical care is always changing. The medical school is innovating across all of its research and education programs, 
with a clear vision to develop the next outstanding generation of leading scientists and clinicians. We've got these amazing, really state-of-the-art facilities, the new collaborative health education building, we do our simulated patient work in there. One big lesson we've learned is that healthcare is shared. The other big lesson is that in medicine it's really important to be adaptive. We see new things added to our curriculum every year in response to new things in the medical field. And that sort of reinforces that we as students are, they always say, lifelong learners. Dalmed's been great, the community's amazing. Dalhousie Medical School has overcome many obstacles over the past 150 years to lead the way to revolutionary healthcare improvements in the Maritimes. The future is sure to post challenges, but the medical school and its partners will meet them with characteristic dedication, collaboration, and creativity. <laughs>